Hey guys, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Whether you're watching this in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening, I'm glad you're here. Happy Independence Day. If you're watching it when it's being recorded, or released that is, on Thursday. And today, I am going to go over my top 10-ish tactical Independence Day USA made knives with a purpose to get things done, right? To, uh protect liberties, to cut boxes, to save Slurpees, you name it, right? They're USA made, they're beefy, they're tactical, and they're cool. Um, before I get started, I want to do a quick shout out and thank you to all the channel members. Thank you all so much. I appreciate you and thank you to just anyone who comes in to check out my knife, my EDC content. I appreciate you. If I could convince you, if you're so inclined, if you'll hit that subscribe button and the bell notification icon, I would be stoked. So starting out, this is the Benchmade Mini Adamus. I can only imagine that the full-size Adamus is even more of a bru bruiser knife. This knife is crew wear. It's treated crew wear. I've got the Sniper Gray Aluminum AWT scales and a deep carry clip on it. It's got a Siebert design blade that's very unique, very thick, very sharp. This knife gave me my worst finger cut ever, um, but it is also a very beefy, beefy stock blade um, in terms of piercing, getting things done. That blade stock comes in at 0.147. So the Mini Adamus is not going to be a Mini in the Mini Bug Out size, but it's going to come out what I consider a medium size knife. We're going to measure this guy out seven and a half inches roughly with a three and a quarter inch blade, a little under three and a quarter inch cutting area, three and three quarter inch inside grip here great knife bench made mini adamus or mini adamus this one is glassy on washers i love the awt scales very sturdy knife very much a go-getter knife which brings me to number 10 we'll say um, this is my full size spartan harsey folder or shr it is the Plague Doctor series, so the Spartan Harsey folder, but it's just got some ornamental Plague Doctor stuff that means kind of something to me from a collector standpoint. But you've got Wayne Harsey's signature on the blade. You've got a four-inch magnet cut blade with a full-size grip. This is a full-size, beefy, tactical knife that is the defender of faith, if you will, or defender of freedom. It is definitely a battle-ready knife and a bruiser of a knife from both a slicer standpoint to a defensive knife to just an overall tactical knife. Um, very thick blade stock, very nice jimping, very sure, simple design on washers. And this is the Spartan Harsey SHR. It is an absolute bruiser and magna cut. One of my favorite USA made knives and definitely one of my Independence Day uh, get it done bruiser knives. So moving on, we come to another American made manufacturer. And this is the knife I picked out of his collection for the absolute tactical knife of my Independence Day collection. At number eight or number seven, this is the Hinderer Eclipse. The Hinderer Eclipse, this is the flipperless version. It's on bearings. It is 20 CV blade stock. It's got a more tactical blade, a little bit thicker with a narrower grind than the XM18, but that's because it's designed to be more of a tactical piercer. It's gonna be about the same size as a three and a half inch XM18. You've got right over a three and a half inch blade. You've got a four inch handle and you've got a three and a half inch cutting area. The 20 CPM CV is super, super slicey. I set this up at 19 degrees. Cut it back a little bit to get a 
more narrow edge, but it's still very, very slicey. But it's also a very thick blade, a very usable blade if you need it as a piercer or as a pry bar. 0.1685. So from a tactical bruiser standpoint, the XM, or excuse me, the Hinderer Eclipse and the flipperless version, the flipper might give you a little bit better um, guard, but I think this gives me plenty of finger guard right inside that choil, and you've got that uh, choke up space if you need it. I love this knife. It's an absolute banger. The Hinderer Eclipse is definitely one of my tactical USA made freedom fighting knives, which brings us to number I think this is number seven. Number seven, which is a fixed blade, but it is by no means to be messed with. This is the T-Kill Knives Nighthawk. It operates as a regular fixed blade if you want it to be. It's got a super thick grind, super slicey on both tips, your front and your back, plus it's an absolute piercer. But where this knife really shines is in its dual grip functionality i guess this one's an abel you've got this really defined swedge super thick stock so because this is designed to go through a car door 0.1675 blade stock but it's a ring knife which means i can grip it like a regular knife or i can easily slip my pinky into that ring which has both a glass breaker a little pry a hammer, a skull crusher, got a reverse grip. If you're looking at a combat, just a jabbing grip or a slurpy saving grip. You've got amazing finger choil up front here. And this is what I consider a tactical operator, special use combat blade that you can pick up as a civilian that is a fantastic knife made right here in the United States over in Georgia. By Tim Kell, Suzanne Kell. This is the Nighthawk. Fantastic knife. Super, super pokey. Super stabby. And again, not a big knife. So if we were going to measure it without the ring, we're going to come in at about a six and a half inch knife. If you go back to the ring, you're looking at right about an eight inch knife, right? But your blade is three and a half inch with a little over two and a quarter little over an inch, so about three and a quarter inch cutting area. But small package, I've got it mounted on an ulti clip. I carry it in my side pocket. It's got a great little trigger to release that blade. Snaps in very assuredly. Great knife, the TKL Nighthawk. Moving on, we come to probably the best value in this collection. And I think this is going to be number six. And this is a USA made Microtech Ramlock Stitch. This knife has two purposes. One surprised me in that it's the sliciest knife that I've ever received from the factory. It is what I would call therapeutically sh sharp, therapeutically slicey, but it's an absolute destroyer. It's a fighting knife. It's got a very aggressive, that Borka blade. You've got M390 MK, which is uh, Microtech's proprietary M390. You've got the Borka Blade logo. Um, it is the Ramlock. You do have this clip, but I've noticed that McNeese and some others are starting to do clips. I might do a replacement clip on that at some time in the not so distant future, um, just because I think they've got some really cool ones out there when I get back into the knife buying world or accessory buying world. But I do have a little smuts on my blade, which drives me crazy. So I'm going to take my KPL knife shield cleaner. And just to keep from going OCD on you guys, which I'm doing as we speak, I'm going to get that tape off the blade. This knife is an absolute powerhouse, it is a bruiser. The ram lock locks up extremely well. It's got aluminum scales. The grip for my hand or a hand that's three sizes bigger than mine is just 
outstanding. You've got this harpoon that your thumb rests in perfectly. You've got this chipped finger grip that gives you plenty of room. And you've got this super aggressive stabby pokey tip ram lock that works perfectly. It's just a great, great knife. So that is the Microtech ram lock stitch coming in at number 10987, which brings us to number six. We're close, something like that. And this is one of the Protecs. Now I was going to choose a different Protec that's a little bit more aggressive, but I've got a knife that's very similar to it. So I picked out this. This is kind of like what I look at as an Independence Day saloon surprise knife. Saloon, like back at the Old West. This is the Magic Whiskers Automatic 3, which is the big boy. It is a 4-inch blade, full-size knife, has no deployment button, so you wouldn't really know how to open it unless you knew how it worked, which you've got this jimping on the heel, this spring, and you basically just take and move with the butt of your hand that scale. So that scale simply moves over. See how it shifts there? That releases the knife and also lets you reset it. So I can do it with one hand very easily. But literally, it just takes a twitch of your hand, and you've got what I consider to be a hunting, survival, tactical, slicey, cutting, stabbing, defensive knife. I mean, this guy has got three and three quarter inch blade. It's got a grip area of about four and a half inches, four and a quarter if you want to be really, really safe. CPM 154 or 154 CM blade. You've got a cutting area right over three and a half inches. You've got this really nice thin grind. This also super, super pokey. It's a lock back knife, so it's going to be very, very stable. You've got no side to side, no up and down. It's tactical in that most people won't even know how to open it, but it opens in an absolute flash. Does its job. Get your Slurpee back in the truck, and you're ready to move on. So that is the Protec USA Made Magic Whiskers 3. So moving on, I think that brings us to number 5 or something like that. And that's going to bring us to my Strider, my only real Strider, my SH uh, or SNG Crosshatch Strider. Um, the reason I don't have my Protec SNG is because it's the same size and basically the same knife as this one. However, I prefer this one because it's a frame lock. It's an actual strider. It is in a blade steel that I hadn't experienced before. A PD-01, which is a tool steel that's very aggressive. It's got this flamed out titanium lock side with this unibody G10 crosshatch show side on washers the action has absolutely broken in fantastically as i fail it it was a little stiff when i picked it up from scotch and things who procured it for me through one of his groups i've been tickled to death with it i love it i know it's not going to be my only strider when i get back in the knife buying game i will definitely pick up another one but guys this is a tactical cool knife it is very much a bruiser it is very much an offensive knife very much an offensive knife, very much a fighting knife, and just a great knife for this Independence Day run through. I'd be remiss if I didn't include it. And that's the Strider Crosshatch SNG. So moving on, I think that brings us to number five again, if I'm counting right. Nope, number four. So this is kind of a patriotic play on a defensive knife. This is my Medford Infraction, which was my first Medford tool company knife that I got because of the shape, not because of the pattern. I happened to pick up the pattern because it was in stock when I went to get it, and I really liked it. I thought it kind of embodied a USA-made, hard-use, heavy knife, the first one that I'd ever experienced. It has a traditional flipper tab, and it's got a middle finger deployment or thumb flicker or slow roller because it is on washers fantastic sock pins s35 vn blade steel 
super, super thick, not only in the handles, but in the blade steel itself. Super slicey. Stab it through a car door, and it's going to leave major, major damage, whether you have it in a combat grip or you have it in just your regular grip. This guy is probably the thickest blade stock on the table, almost 0.2, right under a quarter of an inch, 0.19 scale, 0.19 handle is going to come in. 0.6, so over a half inch wide. You've got this really nice grind on this S35 VN blade. A super aggressive droppy spear point. Just an aggressive knife, a defensive knife, a tactical knife, and a super cool knife. A knife that I feel 100% comfortable trusting my life to if I have to, whether I'm beating wood to try to keep a fire started or I'm beating off zombies, right? This is my Medford Infraction in the Stars and Bars pattern, and it is an absolute beast. Which brings us to number three, and it's another aggressive little chunky MagnaCut, simple, understated, elegant bruiser of a knife, whether you're stabbing it in the side of people's heads or whether you're using it to start a fire or you're using it to open boxes, this Dustin Driver, Driver Defense Cut Company Splinter in MagnaCut is an absolute defensive, tactical, survivalist home run. You've got a full-size handle here that gives you an absolutely perfect ergonomical purchase. Very nice lanyard hole there if you want to extend it with a lanyard. You've got this short, stubby drop point blade that is to die for in terms of how it cuts. Super sharp, heat treated at 63, 64. It's gonna come in right under seven and eight inches. Most of that's gonna be handle. Your blade's gonna be right under three inches with a three inch cutting area. But you've got four and a quarter, almost four and a half, all in handle, all in usable handle. You've got the stonewashed magna cut blade that I've never stropped. That is an absolute laser beam for as thick a stock as it is. It's an absolute jabber. It's a stabber. It's a poker. It is made right here in my home state of Alabama. It is a slurpy saver extreme. Tactical little badass blade. I'm a huge fan. And it is my driver defense splitter so moving on we come to the second tkl in my american save the planet save the country kill a zombie knife review top 10 usa made knives this is the night stalker cg cg stands for combat grade a little bit beefed up off the original night stalker so what you have here is this particular knife is made in 80 CRV2. All of these look stonewashed, but they're really treated with a nitrite boron coating that really ups the HRC. It's used exclusively in the pew pew industry to treat carriers, to treat interior parts, to reduce wear, heat resistance, corrosion, and it's just great on blades. Um, Tim Kell, T. Kell works with a lot of tier one operators. He comes up with a lot of designs for special tactical defense type uses. This is one of those blades. This knife, just like the Nighthawk, fits my hand perfectly inside that ring because I didn't think I was a ring knife guy. However, it's thin, it's rounded, it's contoured, it's comfortable. It's got jimping here in the choil, jimping on the harpoon, a super sturdy, sturdy grip. And guys, this knife, CNC ground, hand sharpened, slicey as the day is long, tactical as the day is long, never gonna come out of my hand. That ring, whether you spin around with the ring or not, it just makes it where the knife's not gonna fall out of your hand. And if you're using it in hand-to-hand -hand combat, or you're using it to save the country, you don't want it falling out of your hand and 
I'd be happy to have either of these knives or the splinter as my fixed blade options for my bruiser made in the USA Independence Day knives. Which brings us to our final knife of this particular setup. And it looks a little frou-frou from the start, but I just saw these at River's Edge Cutlery. They've got a totally blacked out one on sale for like $3.95. They're regularly like $6.50. It was 2021's Blade Show Tactical Knife of the Year, and it is the Michael Zeba S5. Now, disregard that mine is the Odin pattern. It's got a full dress, so you've got these jeweled out skull backspacers. You've got this hieroglyphic type writing on the inside of the backspacer. You've got this next level milling, this artwork that's just gorgeous. But you've got the same M390 Jason Knight blade. You've got this Brooklyn, New York produced mid-tech knife that works like a dream. Short handle with a very nice blade groove. You've got this tactical recurve blade with a harpoon that gives you just full control of that blade. It's an absolute laser beam that is as pokey stappy as you could ever, ever want, whether you're saving Slurpees, whether you're detracting people that are zombies that shouldn't be messing around with you, or you're just opening Amazon packages and you just want a cool USA-made knife that you don't see every day. The Zeba S5 definitely fills that, that void there. So you've got several, several USA-made, we can call them fighting knives, guys, um, several USA made knives that are EDC knives, of course, but they're also can be called into action should they need to be for, you know, defensive type cutting, uh, tasks, we'll say, um, soft tissue manipulation, we can say, um, they're different, right? They're going to give you, uh, both the advantage of being able to use a knife just to use it. And to use a knife because you're pushed to a position where you're forced to use it. And thank God you've got it, right? It's one of those things that works a little bit weird. But knives sometimes, even though we don't use them that way, they do have defensive purposes. They are designed to be, should we call them, uh, um, agenda shifters? Get yourself out of a tight situation that you didn't want to be in, um, that you didn't ask to be in. You know, our country was founded kind of off that type of stuff. This isn't a political rant. This is just me showing a few knives. And these are knives that, should the shit hit the fan, guys, I'm happy to have any of them in my pocket. I wish you all a very, very happy Independence Day. I appreciate everything that every one of y'all have done to keep us free. I love each and every one of you. I do ask that you look out for the guy or gal to your left. You please look out for the guy or gal to your right. Look out for each other. Go forward with love in your heart. And always, choose debate, not hate. If you're so inclined, hit the subscribe button. Hit a thumbs up, thumbs down. I love you all. Peace.